Welcome to the PEG NE24 IP setup tutorial. Please note from this point forward we will refer to the PEG NE24 IP as simply PEG. For our application we will only be using a single PC laptop. This video is intended to aid you in configuring the PEG. Some assumptions are made that may not exactly match your particular situation. Before we get started, be certain you have everything you need to set up. In the package we have provided, you'll find a PEG unit, an AC wall adapter. Now in addition, you should also have a computer, a laptop or desktop with an Ethernet port and the VLC media player installed, an Ethernet cable to connect from your PC to the PEG, an HD SDI video source, and an SFP device connected to an Ethernet cable. Now that you have everything, let's get started. Step 1. Connect the inputs outputs. Connect the HD SDI video source to the HD SDI BNC in connector. Next, connect the Ethernet cable between the PEG 10100 control port and the computer via the RJ45 port. This computer will be used for setup of the PEG. Plug in the AC wall adapter to the AC mains power source and then connect it to the DC power connector of the PEG. Step 2. Login. Open up a web browser on the PC. Type in 172.16.70.1 into your browser address bar to access the PEG and pressed enter. Note, it is recommended that you use the Firefox or Chrome browser for setup purposes. Type in admin for the username and pass for the password. Note, both admin and pass are case sensitive. Step three, encoder settings. Click the encoder tab. Set the audio test tone and audio synchronization as desired. Set the stream enable as needed for your installation. Set primary stream and SD only stream settings as required. Note that the destination settings may require that you coordinate the settings with the IT system administrator. For our application, we will be setting the stream enabled to primary plus SD. This allows the user to run an HD primary stream and an SD secondary stream from the same HD source. The following settings highlighted in yellow are for our application, while your application may be different. Next we are going to set the primary stream settings. Video encoder format lets the user select between MPEG-2 and MPEG-4 H.264 encoding. The primary stream can be set to HD or SD video. Your setting will vary depending on the source video and the picture quality you are looking for. The HD video bitrate can be set from 8.5 to 19 megabits for MPEG-2 and 3.5 to 13 megabits for MPEG-4 H.264. HDTS bitrate. This must be set for no less than 0.4 megabits above the video and audio bitrate setting. Audio encoding format lets the user select how the audio is to be encoded. Audio bitrate allows the user to set the encoding bitrate for the audio. Destination IP. This is the IP address the unit is going to stream to, unicast or multicast. Destination port. This is the port the unit is going to stream. IP stream TTL. This is the time to live for the IP stream. Stuffing output. When enabled, will fill the unused portion of the transport stream with nulls, creating a fixed bitrate stream. Video mode flags. Set the encoder mode. Click Apply to load the settings. Now that we have completed the primary stream settings, let's move on to the SD only stream settings. Step 4. Configure system parameters. Click the System tab. Set all settings so that they are correct for your installation. The SFP settings may require that you coordinate with your IT system administrator. This brings up the system configuration page which allows you the ability to set the SFP and control port IP settings along with the settings for the unit description, SNMP, and user timeout settings. 
Let's start with the SFP port setting. Consult your network administrator for the correct SFP port settings for your application. First set up the SFP IP address. Next enter the SFP subnet. Then we enter the SFP gateway. Next, determine if the SFP port is going to be used as an HTTP port server. For this application, we are setting this to be disabled. Link speed allows the user to select the link speed settings for the copper SFP module. Auto mode allows the module to automatically set the correct speed to match the network. For our application, we are going to leave the settings on automatic mode. VLAN tag enable. When enabled, allows the SFP port to be used for both streaming and control. For this application, we are not going to use the SFP for both streaming and control, so we will leave this setting disabled. SFP control only VLAN setting. When enabled, allows the SFP port to be used for both streaming and control. For this application, we are not going to use the SFP port for both streaming and control, so we will leave this setting disabled. Control port settings. First set up the control port IP address. Next we enter the control port subnet. Then we enter the control port gateway. Consult your network administrator for correct control port settings. Unit description. This allows the user to assign a name and location to the unit. SNMP settings. Allows the user to set trap IP and port addresses. Web settings. This setting allows the user to set how long a web page or session will remain open before automatically logging out after a period of inactivity. Click Apply to load the settings. Step 5. Confirm streaming. Now that you have configured the PEG, you may disconnect your Ethernet cable from your control port. Connect the cable into the SFP output port. Open the VLC media player on your computer. Under the file menu, go to Open Network Stream. Type in the appropriate stream URL. Press play to verify and confirm streams. You have just set up your PEG unit. For more information on the PEG, you may download the manual by clicking the link in our description page. Thanks for watching. For more information about our products and solutions, visit rldrake.com.